Hello everyone, welcome to this live hacking demo session by EdLabs. In this session, I'll be explaining how we can use Kali Linux as an attacker machine and attack any vulnerable web application server. So, as a lab setup, I have this Kali Linux machine and for the vulnerable machine, I'm using another VM which is Zico2. Now, for the sake of demo, I have already set up all the commands that I'll be needing and stored them in this text file so that I can run through them quickly and swiftly. So let's see what Zico is all about. Zico is basically a vulnerable web application which we will be exploiting. Now, as with any application, the first step is to start with information gathering. But before we do that, let us identify my attacker machine. So I'll be running a couple of commands that will help me uniquely identify my attacker machine. Right, so the output you see, who am I? I am root, I'm the root user. The machine name is Kali and my IP address is 10.0.2.15. Now let us start attacking this machine. Now, first I'll run an nmap against this machine, which is hosted on 10.0.2.5 against the server basically, and see what ports are open. It tells me that there is an SSH port open, there is HTTP, and then there is RPC byte. Now, I'll use another tool to find out what are the different directories hosted on this application. DIRB is basically a directory buster. It uses a word list to scroll through or browse through or crawl through different directories of any application and tells us which directories are listable. So if we have a look here, It tells me these are the different directories which are listed. But from the sake of it, I see there is only one directory which happens to be quite interesting, which is db admin. Let me just copy this, go to my browser, open a new tab, and browse it. Now, once I've opened the test db.php, it tells me that there is a portal which is PHP Lite Admin. And the version of this portal is 1.9.3. There is a utility within your Kali Linux machine, which is search exploit. This helps us to search for exploits against specific tools, frameworks, or any other language. So let me just search for PHP Lite Admin. Sorry, there was a typographical error. It tells me that there are four vulnerabilities and one of them corresponds specific to this version of PHP Lite Admin used on this website. Let us see what that exploit is. So exploit minus X and the name of the exploit, right? So if you read through this exploit, it will tell you that there is a remote code execution vulnerability where you have to create a new database and you have to specify the file extension in such a manner that it happens to be a PHP file. And then we can use a remote code execution. So let's follow the same steps. But since we are going to open a remote session, we need to create a listener which can constantly listen to the remote sessions open at that particular listener. So I'm going to create a new terminal and here I'm going to start a netcat listener which will constantly listen for different incoming connections. I'll explain the utility of netcat in coming sessions. So we have started the listener. Now we go back to this portal right now here we have 
to identify the password of this portal. To identify the password, I'm going to use Hydra as a tool. But since I already have the command written here for the sake of demo, let me just copy this and paste it here on this base prompt. Now, Hydra again uses a word list to crack the username and password of any portal. Here in this particular portal, I just had the password. So we no, need not worry about the username. Password as it has identified is admin. Let us see if it works. I was going to enter admin here. Press enter. I am logged in. Now, the remote code execution vulnerability said that I have to create a database first. So let me just create a database, say shell.php. Now, within the database, I have to define what tables I need. So let me just create a table. Say test number of fields can be one for the sake of the demo. Now I have to name the field. So let's say within one table, I had table one. One of the column would be say name. So let me just put it as name. It can be integer, it can be any other value. I need not concern myself with that right now. Default value I'm leaving blank and just set three. So now this has created a table named test and within that table test, we have a field name. Now what I need, I need to make entries into this table. So I'll just open test, click here to insert rows. And here, what I'll do instead of normal values, say Prashant or Ed Labs, I'm going to inject a PHP code. That PHP code, I've already written here to save us some time. This PHP code would basically create a connection to the Netcat listener that we have started here, right? Let's see if it works. So here I'm going to just paste it, insert, and that is about it. Now I have a database which is hosted at user databases shell.php. Within that shell.php, there is one row which happens to have the value of a PHP code. Okay. Now there is one vulnerability in this web application that we are going to exploit. That vulnerability is called local file inclusion. What is local file inclusion? Local file inclusion is a vulnerability where Due to misconfigured application, we can fetch the local files of a web application server using the web application itself. For example, here it says page equal to tools.php. What happens if I replace this with dot 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 dot? If you're familiar with the Linux architecture, you would realize that what I'm doing right now is fetching the etc password file. etc password file basically has the list of all the usernames which have a shell level access to this web application server, the web application server of Zico. So as you can see, I have a root user and then we have another user which is Zico, right? And the default directory of Zico is slash home slash Zico. And the default shell is this. Now, remember we had a shell injected at this location. So let's prompt that shell. So what we have done so far is injected a backdoor. Now that backdoor needs to get executed on the server so that we get the reverse connection at the netcat prompt here. Now to execute that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fetch this file. I'm going to fetch this file using the local file inclusion vulnerability here. We just paste, never mind the double backslash. Let me just press enter. Now, since shell.php has a PHP code in the table, which creates a remote connection, so I should, in theory, get a prompt here. So you see, I have a prompt here. I can say, who am I? 
it will say www.data let's say host name just to check that this is not the same terminal that i was working on when I, where i had run nmap and dir busto it says zico right now this prompt is not very user friendly it's not very interactive so i'll use a python command to turn this into an interactive shell that python command is this i'll spawn a pin bash shell right now i have an interactive shell if you do if config i doubt you'll be able to but in if config is not uh, we will not be able to do it using this particular user so we'll have to change certain parameters now we have a shell access to the server where the web application is hosted now what we need to do is to change our user from www-data to say zico or any other file now remember when we listed the etc password file we came across slash home slash zico now this happens to be the home directory of zico wherein all the files or all base files are particularly installed so let's go there do a listing we file that there is a directory wordpress let's change your directory to wordpress right again ls now here we have a config file of WordPress. Now, usually what happens is in WordPress config file, you have hard coded credentials. Let's see if that is there. So, we'll do a cat wp config.php. Just scroll a bit up, and you'll see that there is a username Zico. Password is this, which is hard coded. Let me just copy this now remember when i had run nmap i saw that there is a port ssh which is open so let's see if i'm able to gain ssh access using these credentials onto the zico server so let's say ssh zico is the username 10.0.2.5 is the ip address it prompts for a password let me just paste the same password and I have the Zico shell. Now, since this is SSH, I can do an if config just to prove that this is Zico machine and not the local machine, the attacker machine that I was working. Right. So now I have a successful user level access of the Zico web server. But that is not enough because I still am limited to my capabilities. So what I'll do is I'll try to gain root access now there are many ways of gaining root access i'm just going with the ones which are already there in this vulnerability usually what we do is we try identify the linux kernel version we identify the specific version of the os and search for exploits again using the search exploit command or maybe using exploit tv but here what we are going to do we are going to first identify what level of privileges this user has so sudo minus l tells me if at all I have pseudo privileges. So it tells me that user Zico may run the following commands on this host as root. So I can use the unzip command as root. So I don't need not be root to execute the unzip command. So let's see if I'm able to exploit this particular vulnerability to get the root prompt why root because once i have root i'll be able to add any user i'll be able to change the passwords change the configuration files of this particular machine and do whatnot so what i'll do is i'll create a temporary directory right and now what i'm going to do i'm going to zip and then unzip this directory so that i get root access this is the command i'm just copying and pasting it so that we don't mess up on the prompt or in the syntax as you can see 
now my prompt has changed from zico user to root user just for confirming who am i id post name and if config ph zero so i am root i am on the machine zico machine name is zico and the eth zero address is 10.0.2.5 so this is how we have successfully executed a privilege escalation using a vulnerable web application hope you enjoyed the demo thank you